I recently updated the how to install Kali Linux on VirtualBox article and video because many of you have pointed out that the guest editions, uh, the VirtualBox guest editions are no longer working with the newest version of VirtualBox using the old installation method. So I went ahead and created a new video on how to install Parrot Security OS on VirtualBox. And the good news is that this way is even easier because we are going to download a pre-configured virtual appliance of the Parrot Security OS and we are going to import it. Uh, let's get right started with it. First, go to the parrotsec.org website and click on the download button. Then choose the security uh, OS here scroll down a little bit and make sure you download the virtual appliance. Click on download and wait for the download to finish. Once your download is finished we have to import the uh, appliance and as you can see I already have a few installations here just ignore that. If you don't have anything in there and you have a fresh virtual box installation it doesn't matter. Just click on file, click on import appliance, click on this symbol here to choose the uh, downloads folder Go on the Downloads folder and choose the Parrot Security OVA file that you have just downloaded and click on Open. Click on Next. And if you want to, uh, you can choose a different path where you want to install it. I'll just leave it as default now. And you can also adjust the name, but that's what we're going to do later. For now, just click on Import and agree the license agreement of the ParrotSec OS. Then the import process starts and we wait a couple of seconds until that is finished and we'll be right back. By the way, there is also a written article which I will link down below in the description and I also will link the address to the ParrotSec website in the description below. So if you prefer to follow a written tutorial, you can do that as well. And as it looks like, we are about to finish the import process, that's great. And uh, let's take a short break on this uh, part because I have to do that. The classic youtuber stuff please guys if you like this video subscribe to my channel it really helps me to keep the, those tutorials coming and also give this video a thumbs up if you like that all right back to the tutorial uh, once you have imported that right click it click on settings then you can rename it i'll just leave it as it is now you can name it whatever you want i would put the version number of parrot there then go to the systems tab and assign it enough memory. It will work probably with two gigabytes. So if you don't know what that means, that means basically you should probably have at least eight gigabytes of RAM if you want to run this on Windows 10, because your Windows 10 will all already eat up almost four gigabytes in idle. So if you do anything else, you will not have a good experience. So you should have at least eight gigabytes of RAM to run it. A somehow efficiently or performant you can put it down to two gigabytes if you want to but as I said give it as much memory as you can spare uh, next go to the processor tab and make sure you allocated at least two cores and I'll just give it four because I have plenty of cores to share um, that's also you should have I guess at least a quad core it will run on one core but the performance will suffer that's for sure all right, that's the only thing we change here. Then this is optional. If you want to go to the network tab and change the network mode, however you want it, you can change it to bridged. You can change it to internal if you just want to try it out without it connecting to the actual internet. But if you don't know what that means, just leave it on net. That's fine. Just click on OK. And next we are going to start the virtual machine by right clicking it clicking on start and clicking on a normal start. Now the uh, machine starts and we wait until that's finished. You will be automatically locked into the system once the starting process is done. And here we go. I was locked in automatically. Then just choose whatever keyboard layout you are most comfortable with. I choose the German one because I have a German keyboard. Click on OK. Then give it a couple of seconds. If it's connected to the internet, it will check for updates, which is highly recommended to do. So click on yes. Then you will be requested to enter the default root password, which is root backward. So T-O-O-R, enter the password there. Click on OK. 
and the checking for updates, uh, updates progress starts. It should only take a couple of seconds. And while we're at it, you can see there is a passwords.txt in here. And if we open that, we can see that the default uh, passwords are TOOR. And you should change the passwords, which we do in a couple of minutes. First, we will accept this uh, upgrade message that we want to upgrade those packages. And this will take anywhere from half an hour to an hour depending on your internet speed and depending on how many updates it's going to install. So we just go ahead and let that run for now. If there is any uh, dialogue popping up with you being requested to choose something, always leave it as the default value if you don't know what you're doing. If it pops up for me now, I will continue the video and also do it in the video, but I'm not sure if it will. It sometimes does, it sometimes doesn't. But as I said, if it does, just leave it on the default value and you're on the safe side. And by default value, I mean you always have a choice between yes, no, or something like that. So always leave it as default and that's always or almost always just hit the enter button. That will be the default value. There we have one example of this. This is the uh, system asking you if it should restart services during package upgrades without asking and you just choose yes for that. And there we have another example for group or for, this is actually wrapper config. If you don't know what you're doing, just select keep the local version currently installed and you are on the safe side. I think the same context or the same uh, dialogue will also come for the group bootloader in a second. So the update now takes already like a good half an hour. It takes really long, the initial update, because there are so many packages to update and you just have to sit through it and wait for it to finish. There is another one for php.ini, same thing, hit enter and continue. There we go, there is the group bootloader update that I was waiting for. Hit the OK button and now we have to choose the dev SDA, the first one, the virtual box or VBox hard disk. This is very important. You can choose the option by pressing the space bar and then just press the tab key to go to OK and hit the enter button once more. Now the update process is complete and what we are going to do now is we are going to shut down the system and we are going to take a snapshot in VirtualBox of your freshly installed and perfectly working uh, appliance or parrot appliance because this will help you in the end. If you mess things up, you can always revert back to this freshly installed state and you have a working system again without running through the whole update process again. There are three ways how you can shut down your virtual machine. The first one is you go to machine and you go to ACPI shutdown and it will shut down as well. You can go through the menu and click on menu and click on the shutdown symbol, click on shutdown here or you can do it the cool way which is open a terminal type sudo shutdown now then enter the sudo password which is still TOOR and the machine is shutting down. Go ahead and open VirtualBox, select your Parrot security appliance and you see this take symbol right here. Click on take and then enter a descriptive name for the snapshot. So what I usually do is I call it fresh install with updates and I put there a date, so whatever, March 2019. All right, then click on OK. You can also do more descriptions here if you want to. Click on OK. And you see that you have a snapshot created. You can create as many snapshots if you, uh, as you want. And I recommend you to do that because uh, if you go along and you install some tools and everything is working fine and you mess something up, some config or whatever, and your system breaks, you have to go back all the way and install everything from the beginning again. So take snapshots as you go take them as like a, I don't know, like a save game in a computer game basically, a quick save function or something. So just use this feature. It's very useful to keep your system back up. Basically, it's a really nice way to do that. If you want to revert back to a snapshot from a previous state, just go ahead and select a snapshot and right click it and click on restore. Then you will get asked if you want to create a snapshot of the current state, which you usually don't want to do but the choice is up to you. 
Okay, to wrap up the installation, let's start our appliance again by double clicking on it. And we still need to change the default password and we want to create another user that we are actually able to work with and delete the default user. So boot it up again and wait till it's in the, till it's booted in the system. All right, so usually I would do that using the console, but um, I just figured out within half an hour of playing around that there is an issue with creating a user account in uh, the terminal as of now. So when you create it via, via the terminal, you are not able to log in and you will be stuck in a login loop. I'm just reading through forum posts on the Parrotsec website. So we are going to uh, apply a <laughs> quote unquote workaround, which is also a legged method on how to do it, of course. Just open the menu, type user and open the users and groups. So that's basically the GUI method of creating a new user account, probably more convenient for you anyway. Click on the add button, then enter the default uh, um, pseudo password, which is T-O-O-R still. Click on authenticate, then enter a username of the user you want to create. Click on OK and set a password, which has to be at least five, uh, five characters long. So I'll just put there something. Okay, you can also generate a random password if you can remember it. Click on okay. You see the user was created, then uh, select the user, click on manage groups, scroll down till you find sudo because we need to add the user to the sudo group. Double click on that and then tag your new username or check your new username and add it to the sudo group. The sudo group is basically uh, this command what we always type before running a command that needs uh, root privileges So you need to make sure that your new account is in this group as well. Okay account was created now We're gonna close this window. We are going to click on menu We are going to click on end the current session and click on log out Then we select our new user account We enter the password that we assigned to it and we click on log in and we are logged in with our new user account now we gotta choose again a keyboard layout. So do that real quick. Click on OK. Then I go ahead and open the uh, terminal. And no, we don't want to check for updates again because we just did that. And then type um, what we're gonna do. We're gonna change the root password. So sudo um, passwd and then root. Hit enter and first enter the sudo password for your own user account. So that's your user password that you have just set and then enter the new root password by choosing something more safe than the previous default password. And let's try if that works. To see if it works, you can just click on log out or switch user again and log in with the root user, but it will work. We just changed it. so. Don't worry about the root password anymore. And the next thing we are going to do is we are going to delete the default user account. So again, open the users and groups uh, menu, then check, choose the user account and click on a delete, then enter your sudo password or your user account password and click on authenticate and then uh, do select delete files to delete this default user account. Okay, this is basically all you have to do. Now you have a low privilege user, you are on the safe side, you changed your root password and you are ready to try out this fantastic penetration testing or cybersecurity uh, OS, whatever you wanna call it. I really like it, I really like Parrot OS, I work with it on a daily basis and I can't recommend it enough. I also have a video and a huge article of the top 10 things or the top things to do after installing Kali Linux that also applies for Parrotsec in the exact same way. I, you can use the exact same tools because both distributions um, are based on Debian. So make sure to check that out. I leave that in the description below as well. And guys, if you liked that video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, well, I cannot do anything. Give it a thumbs down. But also make sure if you did like it, subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for new videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm looking forward to see you back in the next one.